There we go. Hello, hello. I am Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio. Uh, so happy to be here tonight. We get to paint. Um, first things first, let's go through supplies. All right. So I know we're all painting at home. You're painting at home. I'm painting at home. You may um, take a moment to look around. Make sure you don't have anything around you that you're worried about paint on. The paint I'm using and probably the paint you're using is acrylic paint. It's water-based, water-soluble, but if you get it on your clothes and it dries, it's a bear to get out. And I'm looking over at my screen and I can see I'm a little pixely. That comes and goes. Don't worry, hopefully it'll resolve itself shortly. Okay, so we've taken a look around, making sure everything's okay in our surroundings. Make sure you have an apron or a paint shirt on something that you're not too concerned about getting paint on. Um, canvas. I have a 16 by 20 canvas. My canvas tonight is a little bit different. My canvas is not a stretch, it's a board canvas. I really like painting on boards because they're really thin. There's no edge to it, super thin. These are really nice if you wanna frame your painting um, because they fit in a regular frame because they're super thin but I don't have edges to paint either. So I will probably forget to remind you to paint your edges if you have a stretched canvas, okay? Um, if you have a stretched canvas where the canvas is wrapped all the way around and stapled on the back, decide now, am I gonna paint those edges or not? Up to you, but what you don't wanna do is start painting your edges and then stop halfway, okay? So canvas, um, the painting, our inspiration painting, I think it works well, vertical or horizontal, entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to do mine vertical tonight. I think that makes most sense for me. But remember, this is your painting. If you want to flip it on its side and do it that way, that's fine. You go ahead and do that, okay? Um, if you want to switch up the colors, that's fine too. Again, your painting. This is your world. Ooh. Just got a little bob there for a minute. It's your world, make it a happy place. Okay, so canvas, apron, paint shirt. I have a water cup. Um, I like to use something heavy. I use an old mason jar. Coffee cup is nice too. If you have a solo cup, that's fine, but I paint often, so I have dedicated this, this jar. I like something heavy. I'm less likely to knock it over. I'm not the most um, um, neat painter, pretty clumsy when it comes to painting and I have been known to knock things over. So this I'm less likely because it's heavy. Make sure that your water in your cup and we have it halfway full, that it's cool or cold, never hot, never warm or hot. This wants to be cool or cold water, okay? If your water is warm or hot, does something weird to the, to the paint on the brushes. It like dries the paint into the brushes. Okay, so I've got a water cup. Brushes tonight, brushes that we have. I have a big brush. I have an oval wash brush. Yours might be flat, yours might be angled. Whatever your biggest brush is, we're gonna use this for a lot of the background work. I have a medium brush. This one's probably about a quarter inch wide, but then he's skinny that way. And mine's a filbert, so he's rounded. Again, yours might be flat, yours might be angled, but that's okay. Some kind of medium brush to play with. And then I have a small round. Mine is, I'm using a number five small round. It's really up to you, whatever round you use. Just something where you can get in and do some detail work. We're gonna need this for uh, the tree branches, for the lamp posts. Um, we're going to need this for the people and the umbrella at the end, okay? So something you feel comfortable with doing um, detail work in. So I'm going to take these brushes. My brushes, while I'm not using them, they're going to live in my water cup. I'm going to put them in there and leave them there. I've had people comment before that it's not good to leave your brushes in there all the time. I don't leave them in there all the time. I just leave them in there while I'm painting. As soon as I'm done painting for the evening, I'll get them out of that water cup. I'll wash them up in warm, soapy water, clean them up really good, and lay them flat to dry. 
um, but they stay in there while I'm while I'm painting because they could have paint residue left in them until I have time to clean them properly. Something we haven't talked about for a while. Um, if you're trying to clean your brushes really well, Murphy's oil soap is spectacular for cleaning brushes. Um, let me point this out though. If you're going to clean your brushes in Murphy's oil soap, I like to put you know about this much in the bottom of a cup and then soak my brushes in it. Little quick tip here. If you're trying to clean your brushes, like this guy probably needs to be cleaned because he's got paint dried up in here. If you're cleaning your brushes in Murphy's oil soap and you're gonna leave them soak overnight, you don't want the Murphy's oil soap to go all the way up here. This one's hard to see where the metal, uh, the bezel connects to the handle. You can actually see, so you've got your bristles, your bezel and your handle. You don't want the Murphy's oil soap to get all the way up here. It should get over this part, but it shouldn't get all the way up here. Murphy's oil soap will actually break down this glue that's holding the bezel to the handle. And that's not what you want, but it is okay to get it up on this part. This is a pressed fitting. There's not really glue here, so that's okay. Not up here. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll put like this much Murphy's oil soap in a cup, leave my brushes soak overnight and then wash them in warm water in the morning. And they're good as new, right? It gets all that caked up paint out of there. Okay, that's enough about cleaning brushes. Okay, so I have my brushes in my water cup. I also have some paper towels to uh, blot my brushes off on. Paint, let's talk about paint. I only have three colors tonight. I'm using blockout white. People have asked the difference between uh, blockout white and titanium white. For this painting, you can really use either. And they're pretty similar, but blockout white is a little bit heavier. It provides a little better coverage. So we use blockout white if we're trying to create a solid base for things. We don't have to worry about that too much tonight. I'm using bright red. Really any red you have will do tonight. And then Mars black. So white, red, and black, I'm gonna do my whole painting with these three colors. If you have gotten supplies from the studio, you've gotten them in little, little cups, little two ounce uh, condiment cups. Take I, not more than half of that paint out of there and dump it on your plate and then seal this back up, get your lid on there nice and tight. And then you can use these indefinitely as long as you keep the air out of there, right? So this is really nice. So I'll have clean white later if I booger up all the white on my, on my plate. Okay, our inspiration painting. Let me pull this up real quick. I always like to, for you to know where I'm going, which direction I'm going, because that's something I would want if I were taking this class, is to know the direction that we're heading here. So we have this lovely path, right, in the, in the city. Oh, I just froze. Oh, I'm back. Oh, internet, internet special, isn't it? Okay, so I have this path in the city. Okay, I have my little people back there. So the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna identify where our path goes. And then we're going to put our uh, buildings in the background, like our skylight. And then we'll put our ground in, our path that they're walking on. And then we'll put our, I'm gonna call this shrubbery, right? The shrubbery along the path and then our tree. And then we'll start to get into details from there. Our light posts, our people, and then the pink will come on, the color will come on at the very end. So it's gonna be very black and white to start, okay? All right. Oh, Marie, I'm ahead of schedule. Don't know how that happened. Who knows? Anyway, um, I guess I could take a moment and say thank you so much to everyone that has donated to the studio for classes. I really appreciate that. That's helping me keep my space available for when we can finally reopen. Fingers crossed, May. I have a couple of private parties at the studio coming up in March and April. We're going to see how those go. 
And if all is right with the world, May will be able to open the studio again. Uh, something else that Marie will probably take us the last two minutes. You know, once I know your name, Marie and I are good friends, but once I know your name, I'm just gonna say it repeatedly, right, Emily? I'll just call on you constantly, right? She's just like nodding and smiling. She's like, yeah. Um, something that I'm thinking about doing tonight is playing with a palette knife for those uh, buildings in the background, that skylight. I think that would be fun to drag that gray down. I'm gonna play with that. If you don't have a palette knife, you can take a piece of junk mail. Um, if you're gonna use junk mail, use something that's like a cardstock, something that's heavier, not just paper. I have an extra plate. Find your scissors if you wanna try this with me and we'll cut this into squares. I'm gonna go ahead and do that just so you can see what I'm talking about. You can use a driver's license. You can use an old credit card. But what I'm looking for here is this is, I might cut this down a little bit to get it a little closer to an inch, but about an inch wide. This is something that I can load with paint and then drag down my canvas to get those buildings back there. We'll see. I may abort that plan completely and go back to a brush, but I think this will be fun to play with. So I say, let's go ahead and get started. 715 Marie, right? Okay, so let's do this. First things first, let's identify where that path belongs. Find your biggest brush. Now, if you have new brushes from the studio, you're gonna tap, tap, tap those in the water cup in the bottom. Very gently, right? Not aggressive, very gently tap, tap, tap. If you have new brushes, they're shipped from the factory with um, like a starch on them that keeps them nice and stiff. You wanna get that out of there. I have old brushes, so I'm gonna tap, tap, tap because they're a little stiff I'm gonna, with the old dried paint. So I'm gonna soften them up a little bit. Big brush, find your biggest brush. Tap, 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 clean it out, dry it off on your paper towel. Okay. So I'm gonna start with my big brush and just a little bit of black, just a tiny, tiny bit. Now, anytime you take a color, this is really important tonight, especially for the white. Anytime you take a color, we go in the edge, never the middle. You don't wanna mess that whole puddle up, right? always in the edge. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of black, tiny, tiny, tiny bit, tiny, tiny. And I'm gonna put where my path is gonna go here, okay? So my path, find halfway on the right side of your canvas. And let's talk about the top line of that path. It's gonna start here about halfway and it's gonna have a gentle arch down to the corner here. This is the hardest part is put that first big mark across your canvas. So my path is gonna go here and it's gonna land down here at this corner. So I'm gonna connect those two with a big sweeping swoop. You know, a sweeping swoop. So that's the top part of my path. Remember, this is just paint. If you have a line you don't like, we'll fix it. Like, I feel like this is a little too archy right here. Arched. I bring it down a little. There we go. This is easy. And then let's put the bottom line of our path. So they're going to come real close to touching up here, maybe about a half an inch apart, maybe maybe like a finger width. And then for perspective, you want that path to get wider as it comes down to the bottom. So my path is gonna land down here about three fingers in at the bottom, about three fingers, it's a rough idea. And I'm gonna do a lovely swoop there. There we go, path. 
we just made a path. This is easy, right? Okay. So now I say, let's go ahead and paint that path in with the tiniest bit of black on my brush. I'm gonna take some white. I'm still using my big brush, but I'm gonna use that big brush skinny ways with a little bit of black and a lot of white. And I'm gonna do side, side sweeping brush strokes. And let's fill this whole path in. Now, remember, this is super important. All of your brush strokes in this path are parallel to the bottom. Okay, we have a tendency when we get up here to start sweeping our brush stroke down, not what we want. It has to stay parallel to the bottom. Okay, so with black, live tiny, tiny bit of black, big old chunk of white. We want to go side to side. And then again, even up here, we got to stay parallel to the bottom. And now the trick here, you can um, cover up that black line if you want. You can either cover that now or cover it with shrubbery later. The trick here is not to blend this into oblivion, right? Let those different shades of black and white show. But this is gonna be a lot of white. I know those of you that have painted with us before, you've heard me talk about uh, pendulum motion. That's kind of what I'm doing here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, pretend this is this is the canvas. I'm sweeping down and touching and back up, down and touching and back up. That keeps me from having a really hard line where I set my brush down, drag it across and pick it up. That ensures that I have a nice smooth sweep in and a smooth sweep out. So tiny bit of black, a lot of white, pendulum. And again, I'm using my brush skinny ways, skinny ways. And do a section and walk away, right? Don't feel like you need to blend it all into the same shade of gray, right? We want to have all those lovely variations of gray. I always like to remind everybody to breathe. I don't know if my sweet friend Alicia is here tonight. I haven't, I didn't look around to see her, but I always remind her to breathe, right? Relax, it's all good, it's just paint. There isn't anything that happens tonight that we can't fix. And let's cover that whole path in. Now you'll notice on the original, you'll notice there's pink down here at the bottom that is a reflection from the tree. Not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna wait and do that probably closer to the end when I put the pink in the tree. If you're trying to decide how dark this path should be, it's more white than it is black. So every now and then I'm taking a little bit of black paint, but it's a very, very little bit.
Oh, I feel like I should wish you happy Valentine's Day. I know some of our friends are on here celebrating Valentine's Day tonight. We've got some couples on here. So happy early Valentine's Day, my sweethearts. Valentine's Day in my house is one of those, it's one of those holidays we don't really celebrate until my husband announced yesterday that my gift is on its way and it may not be here by tomorrow. And then you have that old crap moment. We celebrate this now? How'd that happen? So I do believe my gift to him will be a nice dinner, a nice home cooked dinner. Does mama doesn't have time to cook right now. So I think a home cooked dinner would be lovely. Speaking of Emily, what are we having for dinner tonight? The time has come. You must let, let me know what you're having for dinner. Uh, to be respectful of everyone's time, we'll take about another five minutes to get this path in here, okay? It's about 7.30, we'll move on. Okay, as you do this, stop and do a little check. Make sure your brush strokes, even up here, are parallel to the bottom. They're all going left and right. Don't let them swoop downhill. And I need to stop playing with this or I'm gonna wind up with all the same shade of gray. And that's not what I want. <laughs> Cinnamon toast cereal. I like it. I like your style. I like where you're at tonight. I haven't had dinner yet. I usually don't before class. I always have high hopes that my husband's going to bring something home. And he usually does. I feel like we've talked about this here before, but I love surprise suppers. So I will message my husband and be like, it's surprise supper. And then he just brings me home whatever he feels like. And I love that, I'll, I'll eat it, I'll eat anything. Okay, not anything, a lot of things. Okay, if you have, if you have a stretched canvas and you have decided to paint your edges, now's probably the time to paint that bottom edge of your canvas. If you have an easel like mine, you can pick it up and hang it here on this top part, or you can lay it flat or flip it, but now's the time. You've got about four-ish minutes. So if you're painting your edges, let's go ahead and do that now. And again, you may cover your black lines right now, or you might do that later. Up to you. I have a little bit of black line showing there. I'll cover that with bushes later, shrubbery. <clears throat> now I'm thinking coffee, Emily. A cup of coffee sounds good. Mm. I've been um, I've been running every day. It's not it's not far, but it's about me keeping a promise to myself and getting out every day and going for a little run. And I just came in from my run to get set up for class. So I'm still a little cold. Coffee sounds good. And since we have three minutes and I'm here in my kitchen, I'm gonna go do that. I'll be right back.
Okay, Heather, so I saw your comment about streakers. So yes, if you run every day, you do something every day, you're a streaker. And again, I don't know if my sweet friend Alicia is on here or not. Her husband is my boss. He did this really cool thing at the end of the year that was um, trying to start a healthy pattern. It was like um, it was like one mile a day for 10 days for the last 10 days of the year. And I did that and then I've kept doing that. And now it's what, February 13th and I've continued to do my one mile every day. I haven't missed a day. So I proudly went in the office a couple of weeks ago and announced to him that he's created a streaker. Probably not the thing to say to your boss with zero context, but yes, Heather, I, I, I know. I know I'm a streaker. Okay, this is your uh, one minute warning or 30 seconds, however long it takes me to get cream in my coffee. And then I'll be back and we'll be ready to move on. Uh, go ahead and clean your brush out uh, because we're gonna work on getting some sky in there next. So I'll be right back. And Marie, I saw your, um, your message and someone offered to get me that as a thank you for something, you know, for, for work. And I was like, no, I'm good. Mm. Okay. Good call, Emily. That coffee is lovely. Okay. Let's see. So let's go ahead and clean our brush out. It doesn't have to be super duper clean because we're going to go ahead and put the sky in there. Not the buildings yet, just the sky. Okay. In the original painting, the sky is pretty darn white. Um, I'm okay if I have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black in my brush, but not much. I wanna keep it white for the most part. So let's go ahead and do that. And you may be wondering if my canvas is already white, why am I putting white paint up there? So canvases are, um, they're primed with gesso. Gesso is white paint, but gesso, versus our acrylic paint that we use. If you're thinking about like wall paint, it's essentially the difference between flat and uh, glossy or semi-gloss. So you wanna make sure and get a nice coat of white on there, even if your canvas is white, because over time, this flat, as we know with wall paint, it'll start to look dingy. And if you wanted to like wipe your painting down over time, it gets a layer of dust on it, you're not gonna be able to get that clean, okay? So big brush, cleaned out, dried off, just white. And I've rotated around my little puddle of white to use on the other side that's pretty clean. And let's paint all of this. I'm not too much worried about this section down here, but if you split your canvas in half and go up, let's paint that white. Again, if a little bit of gray creeps in there, that's okay. That'll just add a little texture in the background, but you want it to be mostly white. So as I do this, you see I'm doing like, it's an infinity brush stroke. Big, flat, sweeping X's. And when you put that white to canvas, you can, you can tell the difference between the gesso, the primed canvas, and the actual white. And we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this. 
smear that white on there. And once we get that white on there, my next step is gonna be to put some of those buildings in the background. So now's the time, once you get that white on there, if you wanna find, um, if you wanna find junk mail to cut into little squares or um, an old credit card, you can use your driver's license if you want, that's entirely up to you. And again, I'm taking this white down halfway, I'm not worried about down in here, but about halfway. into my path. If you're having a hard time telling where you've painted, since we're doing white on white, where you've painted and where you haven't, pick up your pick up your painting flat and change the direct change the angle of it and look at it under the light. And you can see where it's shiny, where the paint is wet and where it's flat and dry. Sometimes depending on your lighting situation, that's the only way to tell if you've actually covered it. Okay, so about five minutes, we'll move on. I wanna give you time if you need to find an old credit card or a square, something rigid to put those buildings in, I am not worried about that top being dry. It's actually okay if it's still a little wet when we move on. So I'm gonna pop my brush in my water cup. If you're, um, if you're painting your edges, get those edges. Wrap that paint all the way around. So when we move on at 740, you're going to need um, some light gray, which we'll mix that in a minute, either your big brush or a little, a little square, like a driver's license credit card. Again, I'm using um, a little piece of cardstock. It's plate that I cut. I'm going to try that. That's what I know. So about four minutes. Again, if you have questions. Oh, so I just saw the question. Should we dry the white? No, no, I'm not worried about the white being dry. I think it'll actually add um, cool texture if the white is still wet and we go to drag that gray through it. I'm curious to see if anybody tonight winds up doing something other than pink. I had a dream about this painting last night because I, I usually do, my brain never turns off. So I dreamt about this painting and it was a um, like a rainbow in the tree and then a rainbow down in the path. Really do any color you want. <gasps> Metallic teal. Marie, that's awesome. See, now you're just bragging. I'm kind of jealous. I'm low-key kind of jealous about that. Metallic teal. Are you gonna mix white with it? Are you mixing? <gasps> oh, Marie, that's gorgeous. Are you gonna mix some white with it to get different shades? A little bit, a little bit here and there, yeah. Oh, do you have any other metallics you could mix with it? Oh, she's digging in the cupboard. Ooh, what is that? No, I wouldn't mix that, you'll get poop. 
you could you could use the metallic magenta but you'd have to wait for the teal to completely dry otherwise you'll get metallic poop So I'm curious, Emily, what's in your coffee? Is it just black or is there magic in there? No magic? Okay. I'm still going through my pumpkin spice creamer. I told you, I told you guys that a couple weeks ago, right? I found pumpkin spice creamer for like a dollar a jug. <laughs> I bought it all. <laughs> I'm probably gonna die of poisoning when it all goes bad. Oh, a red blend in your trees? Oh. Or is red blend some creamer that I don't know about? Okay, so another minute, we're gonna get ready and move on. <gasps> nuh uh, nuh uh. I must, I need to know about this, Emily. A coffee cup that keeps your coffee the same temperature. So I've started making coffee in a, um, in a French press, but I can't drink it all before it cools down. I love French press coffee. So now I have a ritual. Not tonight, because I didn't want to make a whole one. Thank you. Thanks for sending me the link. I've been making my French press coffee and then pouring it over into a thermos and then pouring this much at a time so it doesn't get cold before I can drink all the goodness. Okay, it's 740. Let's go ahead and move on. So if we, let's take a peek at the original painting. If we look at the original, the shrubbery, is it it's almost straight across the canvas the top of the shrubbery so when we put those buildings in there we're going to pull down straight down with those buildings we don't have to go all the way to the path right because that shrubbery they're just going to come down and just disappear because that shrubbery is going to um, clean that gap between the path and the buildings that makes sense you're with your buildings over here you're going to have to get closer to the path because perspective there's not much shrubbery over there but over here we've got a pretty big gap okay so if you're using a brush let's talk about that first if you're using a brush take that brush clean it out dry it off And we wanna keep these pretty light because it's like a, a misty, rainy day, right? So they're kind of hidden in the mist in the distance. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of black and mix it over here in my white. I don't want these to be very dark at all. And my first building, he's two, maybe three fingers from the top and he's gonna come straight down and disappear. Again, my shrubbery, the tops are gonna to be right along in here about halfway. So I wanna pull these buildings down just beyond halfway. So this one, I'm gonna set this here and I'm gonna go down. And I love that that um, white is still wet. So I'm kind of picking up white. Okay. Fun, fun. Going for like a square top here. And I think each one of these is gonna be about two fingers wide. So you may have to take a couple swipes at it depending on your brush size. And they can be different shades of gray, but for the most part, you want them to be pretty darn light. Okay. So that's if we're using a brush. Now I wanna play with this card. And again, about two fingers wide, 
I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take off a little bit of this real quick. There we go. So about two fingers wide. Take a tiny bit of black and some white. Oh, that was a lot of black. Okay. Got a nice ridge of it there on the on the end. And this one's gonna be a little shorter. Right here. I'm gonna drag it down. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, that's fun. That's good stuff. I'm gonna get some more white paint here. I hope you guys are experimenting with this because this is fun. If you have a palette knife, you can use that. I'm not even gonna get my palette knife out. I'm just gonna keep going with this uh, with this cardboard. Ooh, this next one, more white. We might overlap here in front, a little shorter. Oh, yes. Again, this is all in the distance, right? Buildings way off in the distance. So if you're using, I should probably mention this, if you're using a uh, cardboard cardstock, probably gonna need a couple of these. Every now and then I'm gonna go in and cut the, cut the end off of this because it's gonna get soft. It's gonna get soggy. Oh. <laughs> This is fun. Let's get those buildings all the way, all the way across. And if you look at the original painting, they start to get for perspective. As we work our way across, they start to get shorter. By the time we get over to this right hand side, they're probably only about four fingers off the top of the path, maybe even three. They start to get pretty short over there. And it's a little bit darker. It's a struggle. Every time I say a little bit darker, I take a big old swipe of black paint and it's too much. Ugh, struggles. Artist struggles. Shorter. And remember, take different shades of, of gray, right? That time I grabbed a lot of white. You want that variation in there. little taller and then a little shorter again. I think the most important part of this is making sure you have that um, that flat top that helps them look like buildings I think I, if they're if they're rounded, they don't look like buildings, but I think if they have those little flat tops, you can imagine that they're buildings in the distance. And then whether you're using a brush or um, a, a firm, like a palette knife or a palette knife substitute, I'm gonna, you're gonna take a little bit of white and you can do this with a, with a fine brush or your palette knife substitute. 
And I'm going to do just a couple random little um, Oops, let me. Oh, struggles. I'm gonna, it's almost like we're seeing window or uh, lights on in those buildings. So I have a little bit of white and I'm holding it very perpendicular to the canvas. And I'm doing just a little sideways loop. Just a couple little sideways cuts in there. Adds a little more texture back in there. You know, I kind of almost like this more without those, but we'll see. Oh, that's fun. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm gonna stop touching it. I keep looking at it and I'm like, what else can I do? Nope, gotta stop touching it. That's fun. Again, make sure the bottoms of your buildings come real close to your path on the right-hand side, but then they need to maintain at least halfway down the canvas. We're gonna cover this with shrubbery so they don't have to come all the way to the path, but they need to come close. Okay. So how about another, let's go another five minutes on that. And then we'll work on shrubbery here and shrubbery over here. And then we'll see where we're at. Remember, if you have any questions, you're not sure about something, just pop it in the chat box. I'm trying to trying to monitor that. I love you guys that have your cameras on. You're all so focused and I love seeing your happy painty faces. It was a lot of fun before class started. I was watching, watching to see how everybody was doing, everybody's getting set up and I saw a lot of drinks being poured. Everybody needs to be hydrated, I suppose. <sighs> Let's see, what haven't we talked about tonight that we usually talk about? Uh, chickens, we haven't talked about chickens tonight. Um, Phyllis, the rock star, she is good. She is back with the flock. She's doing well. Um, for those of you that have been with us before, Phyllis was a bit of a drama queen, um, but she's, she's back with everybody else. She's doing good. Oh, so my husband works at a bird food store. That's a really simple, simple way to say what he does. He leads nature hikes. He does all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I love that, Keith. I, you go, buddy. Or is that your wife talking, maybe? <laughs> you go. Whatever gets you through. It's date night, right? Um, <laughs> and now I'm thinking, Keith, I bet. I bet I know as well. Anyway, so chickens. Oh, so my husband working at the bird food store. He brought home this block of something. I don't know what it's called, but it's like bird food that's like all mushed together in this block thing that you hang. And then when it's gone, it, it's gone. There's no, there's no case around it or anything. Suet kind of. Suet, but it's full of 
So the one he brought home was full of seeds and nuts and mealworms. And so it's not just like traditional suet, but you're right, it is suet. But it was full of all kinds of stuff that chickens absolutely love. And it was big. It was, it was, I don't know, like a like a milk jug size. And he took it and hung it in the chicken coop. And I went over last night and our buckeyes, we have six buckeye chickens, and I love them. They are the goofiest, most naive chickens I've ever seen. I adore them. Where Phyllis is like sassy and my dusty girl is sweet, the buckeyes are just goofy all of them standing around the bottom of this thing because my husband hung it on a rope all of them standing around it like just out of their reach jumping on their little legs trying to get this thing and they were knocking it all over the place and squealing i didn't know chickens could squeal but they were squealing they were having a good old time so that's my chicken story that's what i know right now my chickens Okay, so one more minute. If you're not ready in a minute, can you flail wildly? Do I see flail? I see a little flailing. Let's give it another five minutes, okay? So eight o'clock, we'll move on. Um, if you're ready to move on, this is a good potty break time. This is a good beverage refill time. Um, Make sure you have plenty of clean black and white paint still. And we will move on at eight o'clock. <laughs> I love that old lady pee break. I don't consider myself an old lady, even though I'm going on 50, but I don't consider myself an old lady, but I could probably use a pee break too. <laughs> oh my God. And now I have another story. Okay. So I always have tons of stories. So a lot of you know what my day job is. Thanks. <laughs> it's called uh, caffeine. Thanks though. Um, a lot of you know what my day job is. I work at the Union County Health Department during the day. I'm our social media shenanigator. But in times of pandemic, um, we've all been reassigned to help wherever we can. We're vaccinating as fast as we can, um, testing. It, it's an exciting time to be in public health, I tell people. It's an exhausting time to be in public health. That's why I so look forward to our Saturday nights here. Um, I need this outlet, I think, as much, if not more than some of you do. So I'm so happy you guys are here with me to paint tonight. Um, I think we broke our, a coworker earlier this week because I'm not naming names, but he's very uh, sweet and very proper. And at one point he looked at us because we had been taking calls from frustrated and angry people all day. And he looked at us and said, I gotta go pee. And he got up and left and I thought, oh, I've never heard him say pee. <laughs> I think we've broken him. It's what the pandemic does to you, breaks you, makes you say pee. <laughs> I feel bad, I sent him a message today asking how he was doing because I really feel we broke him. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, about three minutes. Three minutes and we're gonna move on and we're gonna put that shrubbery in there. You know, I'm gonna have a, a glass of wine later and watch Holy Grail. Shrubbery. Emily, I shouldn't have had the caffeine. I probably shouldn't have had a cup of coffee. As if this is different, this is a different me than any other night, right? Oh. Strawberry. So broken, so, so broken. I think I need smaller glasses. Don't know where that came from. Oh, goodness. So again, we're going to move on in about two-ish minutes. Oh, from the Philippines. Welcome, AM. Welcome, welcome. I think you win the prize for furthest away tonight. 
I don't know. That I, I mean, you would win even over Guatemala, but I don't think Guatemala is on here this evening. If you're on here, Tracy, correct me. But I didn't see Tracy from Guatemala. Okay, so welcome for being the furthest outside the U.S. on tonight. Who's the furthest inside the U.S.? I should say North America. We had Canada on last week. Who wins the prize for the furthest? Who's outside of Ohio? Like waiting with bated breath. Oh, ooh, New York City, Erie, PA. Okay, New York, ooh, Connecticut. Does Connecticut beat New York, oh, Florida, Alabama? You guys are everywhere. Oh, Canada, welcome Canada. See what I did there? Oh, Canada. Oh, another, Ontario, welcome. You guys are awesome. I love that you're spending Valentine's weekend with me. Thank you. So inside the US, it might be Florida. Thanks, Kim. I'm glad you joined us tonight. All right. We're on like the 30 second countdown. I don't even know if that's real. But as soon as my clock hits eight, we're going to move on to uh, shrubbery. Oh, it's eight. It just hit eight. Thanks, Marsha. I'm glad you're here tonight. Okay, here we go. Let's look at our original. Okay, here we go. So I think the biggest thing to, to think about when we put the shrubbery on, I can't not say shrubbery now, it's a problem. So when we put the shrubbery on, it's darkest at the, where it comes to the path and it's lightest on the top. Right, even over here, it's darkest around the path and then it's lighter as you work up. Because in nature, that's the way it would be, right? Down toward the bottom, it would be in shadow and the top part of that shrubbery would be catching light. And those brush strokes are so messy. And do you remember when I said, when we were putting our path on there, don't blend it into oblivion, let those different shades show through. Same thing with shrubbery, okay? Let all those lovely different shades of gray show through. So find your big brush, clean it out and dry it off. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna use big brush or medium brush. Let's see, let's see how we feel. I'm gonna start with big brush. Clean it out and dry it off. And I'm gonna start with my darker color. So probably about 50-50, a lot of paint. So bunch of black, big old swipe of white. And let's start down right real close to that path line. And I'm just doing tiny little, they're almost like X's. I'm almost just laying the brush down. I'm almost smacking the canvas with the brush. Just kind of smacking it. I'm not really drawing it into a stroke. My guidance to you here is a lot of paint because I love, it's acrylic. Oh, Kim, I'm sorry. It, it's acrylic though that we're using tonight. Okay, let's get that dark in there first. And then I'm gonna come back and start adding white as I come up. Now remember, our shrubbery comes almost exactly halfway across the canvas. It veers up a little bit over here, but not much. So about half black, half white, right along this path. Get that dark in there first. And now I'm just grabbing white. I'm not cleaning my brush. 
I'm just grabbing white because it's going to blend with that black that I have on there. So I'm going to start to get a little lighter gray and then a little lighter, just adding white and no more black. Do you see what's happening there? We're getting a lighter gray as we go up. Now I'm using my big brush, but I'm using a really, I can't really say a light stroke, but I'm just using like maybe a quarter of my bristles right there at the end. I'm not using all the bristles because that'll make those smacks too, too big. If you're having a problem where those, it looks like big fat brush strokes, go to a smaller brush, go to your medium brush. Okay. And you can tell I'm not using my entire bristle because I'm not laying my brush completely flat, just the ends of those bristles. You know, sometimes I say words and I feel like they don't make sense. Let me show you on this, on this plate that I cut up. I'm just doing a little bit of black here. Just this, I'm just barely, just barely flattening those bristles. Oh, here we go, just barely. I'm not pushing them completely flat because that gives me too big of brush strokes. Just barely bending them. Hope that helps, hope that makes sense. I need more white. Ooh, I'm going through the white tonight. Um, as we go through the white, you're going to have to save a little bit of clean white for your pink, for your red, for your leaves and your trees, and some clean white for those um, lights on your lamp posts. So don't booger up all your white, save back a little bit. Okay. Yeah, those places where my brush strokes get too big, I don't like it. I like those really short, choppy, chunky, aggressive brush strokes. And I feel like I keep emphasizing that this is a straight line. Your strawberry doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be a straight line. You can do, it can be hooped a little bit, hooped up a little. Bring this down. Really is whatever you want it to be. But once we get this, the top side of the path covered, then we're gonna come down and we're gonna repeat down here, darker at the path, darker closest to the path, and then lighter as we work our way up and out. Okay, I think I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm liking the idea of when this is dry here in a little bit, putting a couple clean white um, loops right back in there. But for now, I think I'm gonna stop touching it as I keep touching it, right? And remember at this point, if you had any of that black line, that initial black line showing, let's get that covered. Right, we don't wanna see that line. Let's cover it with shrubbery. Shrubbery. Okay. Over to the right side. 
darkest closest to my path line. I just noticed, Kim, you're watching from the ER. I thought that's what I saw, but then I had to like go back and reread it again. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry you're in the ER. I hope everything's okay. I hope everything turns out okay. I feel like a lot of us this year have spent far too much time in the ER. Urgent cares, right? COVID has uh, thrown us all a big old, a big old dump in the gut, right? Oh, you guys, I'm liking how this is turning out. Anybody else worried about those lamp posts? A little bit. It'd be okay. We may do one and decide one lamp post is enough. We'll see. Again, remember a lot of paint in the shrubbery is good, right? We want that texture. And as much as we're working in rows, jump around a little, right? You don't want it to look like an intentional row of black smushes, gray smushes and white smushes. Jump it around a little bit. And I know we're gonna have our tree here. I'm gonna fill this in anyway, right? My tree will go right over top. And then we'll camouflage the bottom of that tree with a couple little smushes at the end. Remember, put that, put those brush strokes down and walk away. Now I keep going over this section and I'm afraid I'm turning it into all the same shade of gray. That's not what I want. All oh, smooshes. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy the smooshes. Yeah, I think, I think at the, Maybe at the end, we'll see. I might go back in and get a couple like bright white, bright white smushes right along the top of that shrubbery to add that contrast. We'll see though, it's gonna take that a long time to dry because I've got a lot of paint on there. Um, I don't know that I've said this in for a while in class. As we work on something like this, um, every now and then, Take a picture of it on your cell phone and look at that picture on your cell phone and you'll see your painting differently. Sometimes when I'm working on something, I'm like, I'm not sure what direction it's going. I don't know if I like where it's going. I don't know if I'm done sometimes. Look at it on your cell phone and you'll see it differently. Your phone will pump up the contrast and you'll see it in a different way than you see it in person. So little tip, little tip from me. It's a little trick I use if I'm not sure. And now I really am gonna stop touching it. Brush and water cup. Okay. So let's see, it's 8, 12. This doesn't have to be dry before we move on, but we wanna give it a little bit of drying time, um, but it doesn't have to be completely dry. How about 
820. It's 814 right now. 813, 814, 820. We'll move on. Should give you so, plenty of time to get your smushes in the right, in the right spot. Oh, old paper to make your shrubs. Did you, so I'm curious, you used old paper. Did you, did you cut up the paper or tear up the paper and lay it on there? Or did you crumple it in your hand and use it like a sponge? I'm curious. like a sponge. I bet that gave you really cool texture. So fun. Well done. Good idea. So again, we're going to move on at 820. So we've got about six minutes. Doesn't have to be dry to move on. You're going to want some black for our next step. We're gonna put that tree on there. Super excited about the tree. Make sure you've got a nice, um, a nice, lovely, small, round brush. Again, I'm using a number five, but you're gonna want a lovely, small, round brush with a nice point on it for those branches. Because if we look at the original, the tree starts, starts right about here and comes up, and then those branches reach across, they reach all the way over here. To get a branch that's lovely and smooth and skinny, you're gonna have to have a nice little, a nice little brush. So again, if you didn't, if you didn't catch it in the beginning, um, again, about five minutes, we're gonna move on. If you didn't catch it in the beginning, I am recording this. So um, after class is over, I will take the uh, Zoom link and put it in the event. So if you need to go back and watch it and re refresh and redo something, you can. Or if you decide to stop and come back and finish later, you can. Um, and then at some point, I say at some point, because I haven't done last week's yet, I will put it up on YouTube. I will uh, take down the Zoom link and put the recording up on YouTube. I haven't done last week's because my internet's been special. Oh, Emily, there's your mama. I didn't see you, Lori. I don't know why, I just, I didn't see you tonight. It's the romper room portion of the evening. Stacy's here, Lori's here, and Kim's here, and Cheryl, Cheryl, I haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, my bad. Um, so where do we send the finished product when we're done? I would love for you to, when we're finished tonight, to take a picture and I love seeing your faces in the picture. So snap a selfie. Thanks, Livio. I'm so glad you're here, honey. Um, I would love for you to snap a selfie with your painting and send it to a uh, private message it to Crooked Door Studio um, or you can email it to me. I'm gonna go ahead and pop my email in the chat, in the Zoom chat. So you can copy it and paste it. And that's my recommendation is to copy it and paste it because it's a really long email address and my name's spelled funny. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. About three minutes, we're gonna move on. So I'm gonna put my email in the chat so you can send me your picture when we're done. And then I will try to compile them and put them together in a group collage. I haven't done that in a couple of weeks because again, time and internet, but I will try again tonight, okay?
Oh, so another minute and a half, two minutes before we move on to tree. Again, you need dark paint, a lot of a lot of black for the tree. Doesn't have to be dry to move on. A little bit of white because stark black might be too much. Um, so I've got a little bit of dirty white left on my plate. I'm gonna use that for the tree. And we'll pick up a little bit of white in this uh, shrubbery. Um, and I totally just lost my train of thought. I was gonna say something, it's gone. I'm a mess, hot mess. I've been starting a lot of emails that way, by the way. Somebody will email me and ask me a question and my immediate response is, sorry for the delay, I'm a hot mess. It's easier that way when you just admit it off the bat. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. So um, for those of you that are new here, we, we do this every Saturday night. And we'll continue to do that, hopefully even after the studio is physically back open in May, um, every Saturday night. So check out, I have an event created for the next two Saturdays. Next week is a fox. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited about the fox. And now Marie, I feel like I need metallic orange paint for the fox. Wouldn't that be, right? I love it, Marie's like, duh, hello. <laughs> Marie, I love you. <laughs> oh. oh, the fox. Yeah. Anyway, and then in two weeks, um, we're doing a really cool, colorful sky with like a black silhouette tree. I'm excited about that one because that one we're gonna um, we're gonna use some different things to. Uh, like sponge and texture the sky should be fun. 820. Okay, here we go. I don't know what this was, but you know. Okay, so tree, let me get the original painting. So here we go. Our tree, right? We're gonna start with the biggest part and then we're gonna come up and swoop across and those branches those tiny branches they come all the way over here the thing to remember when we're doing a tree like this that has um like all that lovely pink on it all those lovely leaves the thing to remember is you have to put branches where you want leaves to live okay so i want leaves and in this case pink i want pink to live in this section on my canvas, I have to put, make sure a branch winds up there so those pink leaves have some place to live, right? Now, you can take artistic license and have leaves come out down here and fall on the ground, but your clusters, for the most part on your tree, they have to have a branch to live upon, okay? So let's do this. I think I'm gonna use my medium brush. I feel like my big brush is too big. I'm gonna use my medium brush, clean it out, dry it off. And we're gonna start ooh, down here, probably like a fat hand, a fat hand width from the bottom. And he's gonna be right in the middle of the shrubbery area about a finger width from the edge and he's going to come up he's oh probably about a fat brush width wide but if i start with my with my fat brush wide he's going to get too fat too fast so you can use your fat brush if you want but if you do use it skinny ways i think i'm going to use my medium brush so I'm gonna use black, but I'm gonna use this black here that has a little bit of white in it. And I know I'm gonna pick up some of this white that's still wet. So this is gonna keep my tree from being completely black, which is perfect. Okay, here we go. What do we say about a big fat hand width up? Right here in the middle of this. Oh, I'm gonna take a big deep breath. And I'm just gonna exhale and up I go, letting up pressure as I go all the way up and off. 
Ooh. Now we have a tendency, I've seen this happen. When we make a tree, some people want to do one side of the tree and then the other side of the tree, and then somehow have it come together up at the top. That's not normally how I do my trees. I'm gonna start back down here where I just did and get a little bit wider. Make it press a little harder, get it just a little bit heavier, a little bit wider. And I love that I'm picking up that white in the background. I'm getting some lovely streaks in there. So my tree isn't completely black. So I have that one branch that goes straight up and off. I want to continue to build it wider. I think I want to do another one, another branch. It comes up and veers off that. Trees for me like this are a slow build. All right, you just keep going back over that section, over that trunk, make it a little wider each time. Not worried about the bottom of it. I'll camouflage that here in a little bit with some, um, with some smooshes, with some shrubbery smooshes. Okay, when you feel bold, when you feel ready, I'm going to do one more thing with this uh, with this bigger brush, and then I'm going to transition to my small brush. I want to take a branch that comes over this way, something a little bit bigger that will support all those little offshoots. Before I do that, I'm going to I'm going to thicken this guy up a little. Okay, here we go, ready? So this guy's gonna come up. I do like that. Ooh. Okay, at this point, I have my main skeleton for my tree. My biggest, my heaviest branches. And now I'm gonna transition into my small pointy brush, my small round and start working on some of those small branches, keeping in mind that I need to put them everywhere that I want leaves to live, everywhere I want that color to live. And let's do, let's do a branch tutorial. Let me show you how I do branches. So I'm gonna use my pointy brush, clean it out and dry it off. I'm going to add a little bit of water, just a little bit. So I've cleaned my pointy brush out. I've dried it off. I'm now going to go back and get just the bristles wet. I'm just picking up a drop of water, just a drop. And in this black, black mess right here, I'm going to squiggle that around, thinning that paint down a little bit. If we thin it down just a little bit, it'll flow a lot easier off the brush. Twirl it through there, get it to a nice point. Now, we have a tendency when we paint brushes like this or brushes, branches like this, to really choke down on that and hold it like a pencil. 
And that makes our branches too controlled and almost cartoonish, okay? If I hold it like this and I choke down, it's gonna look like that. Watch how I like to do branches. And this takes practice. And I've been painting like this for 36 years. So I have a lot of, I have a lot of branches under my belt. I'm gonna hold my, hold my brush out here closer to the end, okay? This makes it much, um, I can get a much more natural wiggly branch because I don't have as much control. I'm gonna hold my brush parallel to my canvas and really gently drag and twirl. Drag and twirl, drag and twirl. You see the difference, right? That makes my, my branches a little wiggly, makes them a little more natural. The other thing to remember with tree branches is all of these are going to pull to the left. They might pull left and up, or they might pull left and down, but everything on this left side of the tree is gonna pull left. If you put a branch here and you pull right, it's broken. And we don't want broken branches. Very last thing I'm gonna say about this, then we're gonna go branch crazy. If you have a hard time pulling branches this way, flip your painting. Flip it, right? Sometimes it's easier for me, it's easier for me to pull to the right. Don't feel like your painting is glued down, okay? This is hard because you're not sure what it's gonna look like when you flip it back up the right way, but as long as you pull everything to the right, you're good or now to the left, you know. Okay, so that's enough chat about branches. Let's get them on there, shall we? So I'm using black with just that tiny bit of white in there, adding a little bit of water just to thin it down. And you see, I'm not thinking real hard about it. If I think too hard about it, I'll talk myself out of it. It's kind of going perspective early on we talked about perspective it's okay if some of these branches come in front of your buildings right that just pushes your buildings further back and brings your tree forward i decide if i want one right here just a little one no, maybe not. So on the left side of my tree, everything pulled to the left. On the right side, all my branches pulled to the right. They can go right and up or right and down, but they have to pull to the right. Oh, I hate what I just did there. It's a strong word, but I had a little block that happened. It's too thick right there. You know what? Not worried about it. I'm gonna put leaves all over that. That little section I don't like that I just did. Leaves, right? We'll fix it. <clears throat> what does Bob say? There are no mistakes. Happy accidents. Okay. Now I think I'm going to stop because I feel like I have my branches everywhere I want them. Okay. So to be respectful of everyone's time, it's 8:33. Let's take a couple more minutes to work on that, but then we are gonna move on, okay? 
because we have a lot of detail work to do and I don't wanna shortchange you on that. So at this point in the class, when we get to details, I feel like I start moving a little faster. Um, again, if you feel I'm moving too fast, now's the time to pop your brush in your water cup, take a little break, go back to the video at the end, okay? Don't let me rush you. I'm gonna go back to my to my big brush and get a little bit of this messy, messy white and camouflage the bottom of my tree. Some little smooshes. Try to make them blend in there, little smooshes. Ooh. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of white here. I talked about that a minute ago. Some clean white in the top of those. This is optional. Something I said earlier I was gonna do. I feel like I need a little bit of clean white in those, um, in my shrubbery. Shrubbery. Okay. So I'm gonna play with that while you guys are working on your tree. I think it might still be too wet. I'm not getting those little pops of white that I want. There we go. Well, that's fun. Okay. So we are getting ready to move on to our uh, lamp posts. Okay, we'll get our lamp posts in there. Then we still need to get our, our people in there. So we need to do lamp posts, we need to do people. And then we need to get our, our pink in the, in the tree and our pink down here at the bottom and our pink umbrella. So to be sure that we're done by, by nine, I'm gonna get ready and move on here. I'll give you another minute. I so wish I had pink glitter tonight for the tree. I'm so jealous of your metallic teal, Marie. Really think I'm gonna see if I can find some orange, some metallic orange for the box. I should probably order a uh, order a bucket of it. So then everybody that orders supplies through the studio can get metallic orange. Do we want metallic orange or do we want metallic black? I guess I need to look at the painting. You think orange? I'm getting pretty good at lip reading by the way. <laughs> oh. Sweet P, I see you in the ER, Kim. I'm so sorry. Flat on your back. Oh, where am I located? I'm in Marysville. Are you familiar with Marysville, Kim? Oh, you're in Wapak. So I am. Oh my God, that's amazing. Spray paint, spray my paintings with silver glitter. <sighs> um, I am right in the uptown in Marysville, 125 North Main, like right in the historic uptown. It's a cool space. It's a cool old brick space that will someday be open again. <laughs> okay, lights. Let's go ahead and put our lamp posts on there. Again, final reminder, if you're not ready, you just pause, you do what you can. You're in your own home. You can finish anytime you want, right? You don't have to move at my pace and you can go back and watch the video later. 
Okay, lampposts. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five lampposts. Tall. The lights for the lampposts are above the shrubbery on all five of them. Okay, they have this lovely base that looks like a, um, a thimble, uh, not a thimble, uh, like a thread spool. Whoo, that was tough. Looks like a spool and then that tall skinny and then the round at the top with the little black blurb right on top. Oh yeah, absolutely, Kim. When, when we're done here, um, I will post the Zoom video up in the event. So you'll be able to get the link there. And then it'll also go up on YouTube when I have time. <laughs> okay, let's do this small brush. I'm going to the pointy brush. Okay, here we go. Whew. Okay, so again, my, my lights wind up, my white bulbs, they wind up at the top above the shrubbery. They're tall and then they get shorter as we go. So I think what I'm gonna do, since there are five, I'm gonna find the middle of my painting and I'm gonna start with this guy right here in the middle, okay? I'm using my, my pointy brush, his base, the part that looks like the spool. His base is flat and it sits right here at the edge of the path. Flurp. Looks like I gave my painting a little belly button. Flurp. And then this tall section here in the middle. These lights are really whatever you want them to look like. I'm just going based on what the original painting is. And then a little top. There we go. I've created the letter I. The letter I. And then the tall skinny that comes right up out of the top that gets just above the shrubbery. This is where it's not gonna be straight, it's gonna be crooked. So I'm gonna step in front so I can make it straight. I tend to paint downhill. There we go, straight. That gets just above my shrubbery. And then I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna go ahead and put the little top on. I think I'm gonna wait and put the, the white lights on and then I'll put the little black cap. On. Okay, there's one. Whew. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the smaller ones. So I'm gonna do one here and then one really close-ish to my tree because in between, that's where my people are gonna go. So I'm going to do one here. Remember the base sits just below the shrubbery. One here, just below the shrubbery. He's getting pretty small. The middle spool. That top. I feel like I'm making trash cans. Make this a little taller. Okay, and this little guy over here. Again, I'm giving myself a space here because that's where my people are going to be with the umbrella between this one and this one. So this one's going to be pretty small. go. Okay, and then two more. Let's see. Let me go ahead and put my big guy here so then I can split the difference. So my big guy here 
his base is lower than the tree. So he's about three fingers off the bottom. Again, right here in the edge of the, right there at the edge of the walk. Ooh, this is a big letter I. Ooh, and this is gonna be really tall, isn't it? A really tall post. And again, I'm gonna have to step in front so I can get it straight. Comes right to the top of my shrubbery. Is everybody still breathing? Keep breathing. It's tough when we get to the details, right? But we can do this, we're in this together. And then I'm gonna split the difference between, between one and three to find where number two belongs. And you can play with these lights if you want. I just drug through some of my fresh white there. You can, um, on the original, we can take a little bit of white and do some little vertical stripe strokes to make these look um, fluted. Right, you can leave them plain black if you want. I'm adding just some little vertical strokes there, a little highlight along the top. You can get as detailed as you want here. But again, for the sake of for the sake of time, I'll go ahead and move, keep moving. Okay. While I still have that black on my brush. We did everything, we did our path with those side to side brush strokes. With that black on my brush, I'm gonna put some um, like shading or reflection down in this path. This is gonna help set these lamp posts down, okay? <laughs> I just saw Kim is holding her breath for all of us right now. Thank you, Kim, we're in this together, okay? So I'm gonna do little side to side brush strokes, side to side that kind of taper down, taper down to nothing there. Like creating a, um, a triangle down. So fat brush strokes, skinny, 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 skinny. You're creating that long skinny triangle. So the width of the base and then start to get skinnier. Skinny, 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 down to nothing. Let me get up close and personal here. Okay, so side to side, sideways, and then skinny, 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 boop. Oh, one more, zerp. Side to side, one more right here. Gotta get it right up under that base. Little tiny one over here. Skinny, skinny, skinny. There we go. Creating that little bit of reflection down there. Whoo, that was a toughie. That was a toughie, but we did it. I think right up here, I'm going to do a little, like a little smile, just a little burp at the top of each one of those to hold that light, to hold that globe. 
just like a little smile brush stroke, tiny, tiny, right at the top. And my people, I say, let's go ahead and put those people on there. Let's do it. Okay. So my umbrella is gonna be up here in the shrubbery. My people are gonna wind up down here below the, below the posts. You can put people on here or not. It's entirely up to you. Okay. But I'm gonna put my, my lady on here with the dress. And remember these, this is way off in the distance. This is just the idea of people. I'm not gonna get super detailed. The umbrella means more than I think almost anything else here. So there's her, her body, right? So I have her dress, it's kind of like a little hourglass shape. She's gonna have one leg that comes down and this other leg is kind of back. Underneath her, I wanna do that little side to side like I did underneath these lamp posts to give a little, little bit of a shadow, a little bit of reflection. And then her, her significant other, which it can be whatever it wants. It can be, oh, it could be two dresses, it can be two, uh, two pantsuits, entirely up to you. This is pretty much just like a rectangle, right? Maybe a rectangle with an elbow. Oh, my rectangle needs legs. If we get up close, that really is messy. There's not a lot to it. But I'm gonna put that lovely, that lovely umbrella there. Oh, look, I almost started it right there. <laughs> oh, we need a uh, little shading underneath him, little reflection underneath her friend. Okay. Okay, whoo, that was tough, that was a toughie. But you guys were getting there, we're getting close, right? I'm gonna pick up my medium brush and with some clean white, I'm gonna put my lights on there. I'm thinking, so I wanna put my lights on there. I don't know that I'm gonna put my lights on there yet because I put those black, those little black holders at the top of those lamp posts. I'm afraid I'm gonna drag through it and make my lights gray. And that's not what I want. I say, Let's get some pink on there because if we look at the painting, what do we have left to do? We have the leaves. We have the pink reflection at the bottom. We have the umbrella, the lights, little heart in the tree if you want. I say, let's go ahead and get some pink leaves on there. I'm using my medium brush. I'm gonna take clean white. Swipe a white, swipe a red, not mixing it. And I'm holding my brush and I'm using it skinny ways, not fat ways. I'm gonna use it skinny ways. And I'm doing a little pull in toward the tree. Each time I'm gonna alternate. So this time I'm gonna take red and then white. Last time I took white then red. This time red then white. So the white is outermost on my brush and that's gonna give me lighter brush strokes because that white was closest to the, 
It was on the outside. Okay. So let's go to town on those leaves, white and red. You remember I had a blurb there I didn't like? I'm just gonna cover that. Cover it with a, uh, with a leaf, a little pink leaf. Something I feel like I should show you a little closer. Again, I'm using, I'm using my brush skinny ways and I'm pulling into the branches. Hi, Anita. In toward the branches. If I set my brush on the branch and I pull out, they get like a little fan and that's not what I want. I'm using this brush to help create the outer edge of my leaf. So if I set it down, that's the outer edge and pull in and let go. Okay. So go crazy with those with those leaves. Marie, I can't wait to see what yours looks like with the metallic the metallic teal. Okay. So I'm going to spend another couple minutes. Again, in the interest of time, I'm going to spend another couple minutes on this, and then I'm going to move on because I feel like once I've shown you the technique, you can you can run with it. You can spend as much time in your own home playing at this as you want. The beauty of uh, of pandemic, right? Us getting to paint at home. You're not on my time schedule. You're on your own. Now, don't feel like these all have to be connected to the tree. I might put a couple out here that aren't even connected. Oh, that's fun. Okay, all right, with that color on my brush, again, I feel like I'm gonna fill in, fill this in a little more, but with that color on my brush, hold your brush skinny ways, side to side, side to side, down here at the bottom. So red, white, we're trying to get the reflection of our leaves down here at the bottom. So start at the very, very bottom. And again, you're using that pendulum brush stroke. You're starting away from the canvas, coming in and hitting and coming back up, in and hit and come back up. It's one big fluid movement with red and white. As much or as little down there as you want, I don't think I'm gonna put very much. Cause I don't wanna take away. Ooh, I like it. I'm liking it. I think I need a little, bit of, a little bit of red. I have a lot of pink, but I have some like bright red in my tree. So I'm gonna get a, just a tiny bit of red. I don't want it to look like blood on the sidewalk, right? But a little bit of red to reflect from up there. I'm going to do this and then immediately regret it, right? And I think a couple little streaks of red are okay. Not a lot. And if I feel it's too much, which I think it is, a little bit of white, soften it. Okay. Whoo, it's happening. It's happening. Since I've got pink on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and put that umbrella on there. Top them up, people. Zerp. Just gave them like a little rainbow. And I can add some detail to that once I've got the color on. 
Oh, you guys, we're almost there. Almost. Take my little brush. Little brush. Ooh, with a little bit of white. Put this little heart right here in the tree. This is something if I had a if I had a white paint pen, I would totally do with a paint pen. Cute. Little white heart. Oh, and then a little bit of black. Give my umbrella a little outline. Right now it's all about those little details, right? That little nubbin on the top of an umbrella. Give him a little outline, a little black outline to give him a little shape. Is there Oh, and then I need to do those little um, um, little humps at the bottom of my uh, my umbrella. Zoop. Define the bottom of it a little. Fix my lady. She wasn't quite tall enough here. They're up under that umbrella. And my dude. Or my two chicks. Not sure. Not sure who's under that umbrella. I can't tell. And then. Medium brush, clean it out, dry it off, clean white. I'm gonna put these, these uh, globes on here. Round, around, 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 zoop. Again, remember perspective, they get a little smaller. You may decide they need two coats of white, that's okay. I think mine are gonna need two coats. They're not uh, popping like I hoped they would. Well, that one is. So I'll let them dry and come back and give them another coat. I think it's our instinct to wanna get a lot of white paint on there, put more paint on, and that doesn't work with acrylic paint. You have to let it dry and then cover it again because you if you try to get it heavy and heavy enough first go around you end up picking up half dried paint so you gotta let that white dry and then we'll come back and we'll give it another coat of white but for the interest of time i'm gonna i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna go back to my little brush with a little bit of black and give them that little, that little blurb right on top. It's like a little tiny little triangle right there on top. It holds that little globe on there. And I think, I think, I think we might be done. Okay, so I think this might be the end of the instruction. You can keep painting. You go to town, play, have fun. I think I'm gonna keep playing a little bit. I think I wanna go back, um, but I can do this off camera. I wanna go back with some white. Now that some of my tree has started to dry, I can go back with a little bit of white back over a really light pink and that'll make this a little more interesting, adding those different shades of pink. Okay, that's something you can do to play. Add another, another layer that gives that dimension. I feel like I want a little more white, white down here in the bottom. Soften that red that I put on that I'm not super sure about. I might even play in these lamp posts a little bit. Give them some little white lines for little flutes. I feel like I could highlight my umbrella a little bit with some white. So you can keep going and get all kinds of fun detail and texture on there and keep playing. But for, this, for the interest of time, 
I'm going to go ahead and end here tonight. And the very last thing you want to do is to sign your painting. I've heard some people don't like to sign their paintings. You don't have to sign on the front. You can sign on the back, but you always want to get your name on there somewhere. So I like to take a paint pen. I'm not going to sign mine yet because I'm not done. And sign, artists usually sign in the bottom left or the bottom right. So I will probably sign with a black paint pen or maybe a silver paint pen because I'm all about the metallic now, Marie, you got me. So I'm probably gonna sign with a silver paint pen down here in the bottom corner. You get to decide what your artist signature is. Mine is SS, blah, 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 blah. And then I always like to do a little tick and a 21. So I know when I created it in 2021. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and then I will give you the opportunity to unmute so we can talk for a little bit. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight. This was a lot of fun. This was good. Um, thank you for joining me from Crooked Door Studio. I am Shauna Sue. I so appreciate you and I'll see y'all next week. Thanks.